This is what we're going to run through today. Just add another counter spell and another last hope. So let's get in here and get going. Played this deck with two leagues today. My work is in such a way where I have to take a 40 hour online training. So it's pretty easy to do that and play Magic at the same time. So that's what I've been doing there. So played two leagues today. Went 4 1 in one of them. So close to 5 0 ing. Kind of got sucked out right at the end, which sucked. And then what else did I play again? Then I went I went 2 3 in another one, which was a little unfortunate, but. We keep getting some good results tonight. All right, I would like to play first. Um I'm gonna keep this hand because I'm on the play, but I this hand's not great. Like, one of these is likely a mulligan unless we hit, like, a bunch of Thought Scours or something like that. This is going to get me a Blood Crypt. Though, I could just get another Watery Grave. Because next turn I'm likely going to want to go Steam Vent, Stubborn Denial. So let's just go like this. Oh, so we're playing against this deck. God, there's so many of these cards that are just going to need to be stuck. I could just take this Simeon Spirit Guide and try to slow him down. Because, like, this deserves. All these need to be stubbed. I think I'm going to try that. I'm just going to try to slow him down a little bit. Maybe, like, find something off the Serum Visions or at least get a Gurmag Angler in play. On to... So if I put this on top, then put this under it, I can go hold up, fetch land, hold up stub, stub something, four cards in the graveyard, three cards in the graveyard, no, four cards in the graveyard. Then I can play around Blood Moon and not have to stub the Blood Moon, which I'm kind of a fan of. So let's go like this. Okay, so there's the planes. We don't even really have to stub this because... We don't have any one more one mana spells, but after that, we're not going to have anything else going on. So we're just going to delve full retail here so that we can play our next angler next turn or have a, have a chance at it. We, need, we would need to put one more card in the graveyard to do that. All right, missed the land drop. Um, I might as well put one of these on top because if I put one on top, that means next turn I can, or I can at least set up a battle rage. I don't think this, I don't think this deck plays anyway. I guess they play like Journey into Nowhere and that'll get an angler off the board. And dead on the board. Dead through a blocker. Just dead through a lot of stuff. How we're going to lose this match is if we just get cheesed out on the draw and then mulligan on the play, I think. So we want this, this. 
So braid, probably the Colgon's command. They could, it's not, they definitely could have, um, like, ensnaring bridge. What if I want to get rid of these? Get rid of these. They're going to have rest in peace after sideboard, so we're going to have to cut down on some anglers. Dismember kills Little Gideon, but that's kind of it, so that's probably not great. We're going to keep the snap catches because at least we can flash those in as beaters. Yeah. This deck's just a whole... This deck's just, you know, 60 middle fingers. Like... That's... This is how we're going to... We're going to get cheesed out when we lose this match up here. All right. We'll keep this. We have a way to get a chalice off the board. We have a ley line coming from them, which is kind of nice. Like, ley line is... Like, it doesn't impact our hand, so pending how we draw, this is kind of like a mulligan for our opponent. I'm going to leave this Street Wraith. Well, now we're even. We are going to stub this because we have so many. And even if they pitch a guide here, okay. One, two, three, four. Okay, so that's an angler. Oh man, I love playing Gurmag Angler on turn two. Now we get to play Gurmag Angler with Stubborn Denial up on turn two. And people say that you can do this without you can't do this with Serum Visions, the Serum Visions version. Snapcaster, there's a good beater. Counter your Blood Moon. I'm kind of worried about a Nahiri. a really good draw too so now we're just going to hold and then i'm likely just going to flash this snapcaster mage in if my opponent doesn't if i don't just use my mana here Just gonna leave that until we need it. My opponent's on a one turn clock. Yeah, both teams played hard. Nice, nice deck. This is what you get. You sit here, you play this dumb derpy deck, this lock piece deck, and then you just get creamed when people play interaction. People can inter it's weird. You play this deck that takes advantage of people that don't interact on the stack, and then you play someone that interacts on the stack, and you can't win. I get so much satisfaction beating decks like that. Decks that are just trying to lock people out of the game and not do anything else. Oh, that feels good. How you doing tonight? Club, Club Black 19. Sorry if I messed your name up. Um, you can, like, potentially talk me into this because we have a Faithless Looting. But if we break off the Looting, then we're, like, su we're super dead. All right. We're going to keep whatever we put on top just... Just to do that because we're going to fetch... Thoughtseize no matter what. Especially if my opponent mulligans and like we keep our scry on top might inf might influence their scry. I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. 
keep. This looting's not great now. Like, looting has its pros and has its cons. It is not good if you've mulliganed. That is for sure. And this is not the matchup to a mulligan against. Let's take the search. And then we're just going to try to take Jace and then Teferi. Yeah, I, I tend to be a big counterspell guy in my sideboard. And I think that I'm going to play, like, uh, so the IQ, so I live down in Virginia, and this is, like, where Ben Nikolic is from. And he has a lot of, a lot of people like to play his decks. All right, that's not a bad draw. A lot of people like to play Ben's deck. So they're going to, uh, oh, gosh, what was I going to say? A lot of people like to play Ben's deck. So I'm going to play against a lot of control decks and a lot of uh, like Tron decks because that counteracts them. So I wanted to have like a couple more, um, a couple more good cards in my sideboard for control decks. All right, we're just going to be mana efficient now. We're just going to take this to Fairy. Third dismember, okay. That is some bold. That is some. You got some stones there, Clebot. Cleblanc. Three dismembers is a lot. Going to field my red source probably. No, they're just going to snap. Snap serum visions, okay. Put two cards on top. All right. Chip in with this and play our Death Shadow. This is the kind of game we can win. Search for Escanta is really good against us, though. It's going to kind of propel them to their Teferi. So do have to, like, find a way to win quickly. Yeah, that's... That's a lot. Now I don't even really want to cast this. So the question is, can we kill our opponent next turn? So like, my opponent has to have a land. The thing is, if they keep a land, they can just flip their search and then terminus me. But if they don't, they just play Teferi. But if they play Teferi, minus on my Shadow, I have to kill my Snapcaster Mage. So I think we're just going to pass. Control some combo. Okay, so they're going to Terminus me anyways. All right. So they have another one of those to follow up. They should hit my red source right now. They didn't. So we're likely going to looting into those cards next turn. Kind of weird, like, spells are not that great for my opponent unless they can use them on the, like, Detention Sphere. Like, they hit another land, and that's pretty... Well, it's still not great, because... 
I think I messed up with how I stacked. Oh, so now they messed up my scry. Let's grab this. Then they sphere my shadow. So you have Teferi Terminus. All right, well, at least Snap Thoughtseize takes the Teferi. They picked up a Blessed Alliance. They have Blessed Alliance in their main deck. Jesus Christ. Get a red source. So I can scry, I can like scry into, or looting into a scry here. Oh, they're just gonna cryptic command this, okay. It's a very aggressive use of a cryptic command, in my opinion, but. We love some fair magic, fair mono is nice. Now, let me attack first. Get them to use this alliance. Maybe they might just like. Okay. <clears throat> we don't need that many street rates. Okay. The door is shutting. They didn't search. They could have searched, right? They had four mana in the second main phase. At least I think. Unless I missed something. Oh, there's a colonnade. Oh, well, we're not going to get colonnaded. I do like ditching lootings to lootings because, like, we just we we can't be faithless looting now. We don't have enough cards. Okay, click kills me. Click his game. Uh, we get we get better after sideboard, but it's still not gonna be it's still gonna be rough. Get rid of some of this useless removal. I would like to I like to keep dismember in because um, it leads to explosive draws and they sometimes have uh, whatever it is. Um, gosh, I can't think. They sometimes have Bane Slayer Angel. Gonna cut one looting. Going down a card in this matchup hurts. Yeah, search search for his can't like so. Blue white's really hard to win. It's it's probably it's like our worst matchup in the format. Um, worst matchup in the format probably. The um, and it's because of like supreme verdict and search for Ascanta. So this is a really solid hand. Pretty explosive. I'm gonna cycle one of these this right now, but leave the other one in case I hit a serum visions. Turn to Angler if I find a land. So this is a pretty easy Serum Visions. And then I'm going to do the Snapcaster Mage in my next one. I could just take Snapcaster Mage and then like let my opponent dirtle. But Serum Visions is pretty good here. All right. Liliana is really good as well. So we, we've got, we're hitting pretty decently here. And I think I'm actually going to play my Death Shadow. Well, I actually should play the Angler because there's a chance that they have Graveyard Hate and I should try to get my Angler in under that just in case they rip like, like they could go, they could easily go White Source into Rest in Peace. 
Even though I, I miss out on a little bit of damage. So white source, no rest in peace, okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna start off here. Just in case we hit stub. Uh, six, four. Opponent has a dispel anyways. Okay. All right, let's see what our opponent's drawing. So they're drawing a colonnade. So we have to kill them before that colonnade matters. Which we kind of have a chance to. So my opponent's not drawing anything. K command's not bad either. They could field me. No, they're just going to play the colonnade. So Fetch Shock 10. And we just ten them. And the question is, I'm going to get my Liliana in play because I can't Colagon's command because of uh, um, the Dispel. Maybe I should have taken the Dispel earlier. I think my opponent's draw has been pretty inept, though. Like, taking that Serum Visions on one, I think, helped out a lot with that. Yeah, the third dismember is ballsy, in my opinion. Like that's that, that's the point where you're getting to a lot of self inflict, a lot of damage. All right, we're just gonna run it back the same way. This hand but then again I really don't want to mulligan so I'm gonna keep this we can stub a turn to rest in peace or search for his Kanta which is a pretty big game yes but the second dismember is often not a very good draw at least in games that I see especially you know like the games where you have to flashback this member get pretty sketchy, in my opinion. Yes, they involve the first dismember. The second dismember, I find, is often a blank card. We might be looking at an EOT Snapcaster Mage if we don't. If I, if my opponent doesn't give me something to do with these stubs. I'm just not going to give my opponent an option on this field of ruin. And if they deal, they're going to deal with this eventually. It's either going to get me a land or get me a. Either it's going to get me a land or it's going to be in the graveyard to help delve. Now, my opponent doesn't have logic not up. The problem is if I just try to jam this Liliana and they just jam Jace, then I'm then I'm just like super dead. So we're gonna we're just gonna hold up. <laughs> that's that's a good way to do it. I'm 
gonna stub anything that I get the opportunity to stub because I have the Snapcaster Mage. And because they made mana for us, now we can snap stub. And even if they wrath the board, I can rebuy a stub and then have a rebuy a snap, have another stub up. It's annoying. Very annoying. I would like to hit a land here. I did not, but I likely can put this on the bottom, put this on top. Let's see what my opponent's got going on. Just take their path. And then attack and then play Gurmag Angler. I shouldn't attack because it turns on the Blessed Alliance. We have stub for that. Just hope my opponent doesn't rip something here. But they can't play Teferi, which is very good for us. So... When I play no ban, oh man. When I played no banless modern for a little while, that was a very nice part of um that was a very nice part of that uh of that what I was whatever I was gonna say. Um very nice part of that format. Was was misstepping, adding misstep to my deck. It's interesting. Well, now we're going to make this colonnade pretty awkward because they have Opt and Blessed Alliance as their last two cards. So by playing this second shadow it is going to make it difficult for them to attack me. I could have snap stubbed that, but I would like to play my second shadow. And they don't block. So the last card is stub, or is opt. They didn't cast it. That's odd. Yeah, I lost. I went 4 1 today and lost to a taking turns deck. And I was just like, ugh. So I'm actually okay trading a shadow with this colonnade if that's what my opponent wants to do. Because this colonnade is going to pressure my Liliana. Doesn't appear that they want to do that. Okay. Yeah, that's tough. Magic will get you sometimes. Yeah, you got the opt. We're actually, like, surprisingly close to killing our opponent here. That sucks. Like, we just let this happen. We're not, like, flashing the Snapcast to Mage in. If they take my Liliana, I still have Snapcaster. And Liliana can eat this. And if they attack me, then I crack them back for 14. And they have to have something. They probably take my Snapcaster. They took Snapcaster, okay. Okay. They have two cards. I don't know why I have them. Just gotta hope that this last. That's dangerous, dude. So what are they going to do? They're going to cryptic tap my team, return my island, tap all creatures I control. 
Okay, now we gotta find something. Go to four. All right, we're gonna play like we're gonna hit something here. I could have shocked myself, I guess. I need to hit push or dismember. That was a very that was a good play from our opponent. All right, everyone likes a redraw. Yeah, good play from the opponent. Bouncing this island made it so that if I wanted, if I didn't hit, uh, that if I wanted to replay the Liliana or Kolagon's command, I was going to have to fetch shock, which left me dead to the colonnade. It's good, good play from the opponent. Oh, I need to go grab my Kofefe. Yeah, that was just good play from my opponent. They deserved it. They deserved that one. Let's hope we can rattle off three in a row. Yeah, we're going to keep this. If we find a threat, this hand's going to be super explosive. Just discard spell, discard spell. We're playing against Burn and we don't find a Death Shadow, we are likely dead. Okay, here's that Vengevine deck. I kind of just want to take this Faithless Looting. We only have one land, yeah. Oh, they have a Neonate too. The Neonate doesn't do as much as the Looting does though. I'm going to have to kill this Grim Flare because this Grim Flare is going to like do some serious work. You land. Okay. Let's see what they're drawing. Opponent is not drawing a land. Though that is a one power. So they like sack this, draw this, draw land, draw another one power creature. It could be in trouble. Yeah, I almost just want to take. Because they go, the card underneath this Neonate, they kind of just want to take some of their one mana creatures. The problem is they can just still just cast two because they're going to be able to cast this. So taking the Bushwhacker just means we don't get like hasted out of the game. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. There's no need for my opponent to crack it now, if that's what they're waiting on. It is not what they're waiting on. So now you sack the Neonate, because if you hit land, then you go Neonate, Grave. You sack the Neonate, Ditch Gravecrawler, because then if you hit land, you go Neonate, Gravecrawler, crack me for four, yeah. They ditch Vengevine, they drew Neonate, sack your Neonate. Probably ditch like Grave Crawler, look for a land. Or no, don't ditch Grave Crawler. Probably ditch like Collective Brutality. No, they ditched their Grave Crawlers. They must have drawn another one drop. Jeez. We are not doing it. So we're going to get rid of this Collective Brutality because we don't want them to cast this Collective Brutality putting this bridge in their graveyard. Because we can counter it, but just casting it does enough. Alright, well, we're going to probably kill this before my opponent can do anything. Like, before they put a creature on the stack. 
because this is gonna like enable their game plan. It's been a very odd game. Just remember this just take two, go to five. I can still fetch shock to like faithless looting. Okay. We're just not gonna take any damage. They just sack this. What do they do with it? I really hope there's a death shadow on top of my deck. That would be nice. I still don't know if this deck is real or not. Like, there are some times where this deck just looks unbeatable, and then there are some times where this deck just looks like it doesn't do anything. So I'm not exactly sure how good this is. The, the sweet part here is if my opponent keeps a land to flashback this looting, to ditch this bridge, we get to stub it. And that just kind of like makes so they're just putting so much less pressure on us. That's probably what they're thinking about now. I put a card on top. I bet you that's a land. Grizzly Salvage. Okay, so they just they put they put bridge on top and then cast salvage. Okay. All right, there's the first step to it. They put neonate back into their hand. The neonate's gonna get two zombies though, so we're likely in a lot of trouble. It's gonna get three zombies because they milled over two bridges, it looks like. Yes, yeah, because this is like the discard is part of the cost. So we're pretty much dead. Because we can't kill one of these and we can't fetch. And then that comes back. Yeah, we're dead. We're not exactly dead. Like, we can block this. But we need to draw red source into battle rage. And I think we need to do that in one draw step. And we can't, we can't draw two cards in a turn. All right. So when I play against this deck, I've been noticing that I like cutting these. Snapcaster seems pretty slow. I kind of like having all of my stubs because being able to counter like a Faithless Looting or something like or like a Corpse Churn is pretty big. I wish I have one more piece of removal to clear the way. I don't know if this is like any good sideboarding, but Snapcaster feels like clunky and slow. Explosives at least blows away the board. Like if they have like eight zombies, I can blow Explosive that away, but... I would like to play first. And we're going to keep this hand. We're going to go Fetch Shock, Watery Grave, Serum Visions on one. We're looking for Battle Rage. This deck can't be Battle Rage. Yeah, that's something there, but I don't know. That might be okay. If I thought, I think if this deck got really good, I think I would want another Battle Rage in my board. Because this deck can't beat Battle Rage. There are many decks that I want Cyborg Hate against. And then when I think about like what to, like what I want, I just think that like battle rage is almost better hate than anything else they can they can do. And 
My opponent's tanking this much. I almost don't want to Serum Visions on one. But what can they have for turn one plays? Their turn one plays are Faithless Looting, Stitcher Supplier, and Neonate. So that doesn't feel super great. And if I find a... If I can scry into a Thought Seize or a Street Wraith, I can play Shadow next turn with Bolt Up. So I think, like, it's just a bit too low impact to just not do anything here. So this is pretty explosive. There's the stitcher. So we're just going to get rid of this hanger back walker. Then hope to God my opponent doesn't find like a lightning bolt or an enabler. If they don't find an enabler here, like if they don't find a way to discard, I should be in pretty good shape. Well, I guess they can hit like Neonate, but I'm, def I'm definitely just going to bolt this thing. Viscerous here is okay. Should have fetched. I should have fetched differently. So I'm just gonna bolt this thing. Now, yeah. See, I lose it. I basically lose a turn here because I I've messed this up. Because they're gonna block here. I could have like fetched in a way to go bolt bolt. Like, I guess I couldn't have because. No, I could have fetched Blood Crypt. That was loose. Put your card on the bottom. It's good for the home team. It's nice to know that we have a couple of their enablers covered. Okay, so they stitch a supplier into nothing that really matters. Hopefully they draw just like Faithless Looting for the rest of the game. Grave Crawler is cool. Fetch Shock, Bolt Myself, Battle Rage. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling 22. So I wonder if that was an. I wonder if my opponent was supposed to keep that hand. Like they're an enabler away from being like very aggressive. I might cut one of these. Let's try this. Let's try the lava man plan. This might be kind of low impact, but like worse comes to worse, it can also shoot down buy me time against uh, whatever they are. The tokens. So I have a shadow, which is important. And I have a bunch of redraws. My opponent Mulligan. I'm going to keep his hand because Death Shadow is like that important. And I have a lot of ways to put together Battle Rage. All right, those are good good mills from the home team. Oh, my opponent rolled a five. Um, I don't think I want any of these. I might want this faithless looting. I think I'm gonna want this looting. It's gonna just dig me to battle rage, which is what's most important. Do this on my opponent's upkeep just in case they've got discard spells. 
Top of line gorge. Ooh, doesn't well they do have a land, obviously. I guess I'll wait. They might they might play like a looting. Okay, so they have another land. Okay, so they're drawing a ballista. Ballista kinda beats up on my lava mancer. Not gonna lie there. Okay, so we can get nasty. And then I don't know what I'm gonna stub here, actually. So I think, I think, oh, I can't get nasty. One, two, three, four. Ooh. If I hit a street wraith or a bobble, I can. Frickin' island, man. And I think we just want all of these on the bottom. I really don't want to thought seize my opponent. The next turn we can go shadow. Angler, if my opponent attacks me. Yep, they attack. And now it's all about finding Battle Rage. Ballista. Okay, that is nice. That might, that might lead to a kill next turn. Depending on what we draw. Because I can clear out both blockers while dealing myself four points of damage. So, like, we're looking at 12 Thoughtseize. I guess we can't because the Shadow can only, we can only deal like 18 points of damage to the next turn. I guess it's 17. So, like, we have to find Battle Rage to kill them. It, it is, like, a potential two-turn kill, though. <whistles> My Ballista is annoying, so we're just going to get that off. I'm just going to push this and attack, I think. I can Thought Seize them afterwards. So this is what? This is 12 and 12. I might as well do it now because it doesn't matter really what they draw. It's a bridge, okay. What does this do in play? So there's nothing in play. Okay. So I don't see what my opponent can draw. I guess if I'd done two more damage and both of these creatures would be lethal. Ooh, they could kick a they could kick a thing and kill me. Oh no, did I just walk into this? Yeah, I did. Oh man. Yeah, I tossed that one. Yeah, that sucks. I just got sucked out on so hard there. I don't know. I guess, like, I'm pretty sure it's just wrong to play around this, right? Though maybe it's wrong to thought seize them. Not sure. Oh, that's frustrating. Maybe I just got too aggressive. Yeah, I did lose to Avenge Mine Hardcast, and I didn't think about that. Yeah, 
Yeah. If I if I had been if I'd have been like really on my game, I, I think I would have not attacked with the fish there. Because my opponent's still dead next turn. I would have done seven, and then I would have done fourteen and got him anyways. Yeah, that's stupid. That was stupid. Yeah, that was, and, and I lost. That's my fault. Just all my fault. I'm going to keep this hand. We got a bolt. We got a push. So if we're playing against a creature deck, this hand's actually pretty solid. If we're playing against a control deck, then this isn't great. Looks like we're playing against a control deck. No. Okay, nice. Oath of Nyssa. Okay, so we're playing against like a Sahili deck. Am I drawing an island? So I do want to cycle now because I wouldn't mind hitting a discard spell. All right. Well, Battle Wage is a pretty solid draw. I'm going to do this now so I can draw Dismember. If I draw Dismember, I'll be able to play Shadow next turn. Time Warp. All right. At least we got Stub in hand. Stub's pretty solid against Time Warp. Gourmet Angler's not great against Time Warp, though. So there's the island. I can't wait. I'm playing against the Oath of, Oath of Nyssa Time Warp deck. All right. All right. Probably can ditch this push. Rot row. <laughs> yeah. The Oath of Nyssa Time Warp Remand deck. This is wild. This shit is just wild. Take an extra turn, skip until the skip the untapped step. I just have no idea what's happening. I'm going to stub this time warp, hopefully. If not, I'll be able to get this Gurmag Angler down and then stub it. Well, then the problem is they have the Path to Exile. So play planes. So uh, what's my play here? I got to like, the problem is like, at least the time warp's not very good from our opponent because the time warp, it's not like they have a planeswalker in play or like they're drawing extra cards. So I could just go like, but I don't even really want to cast my serum visions because fish shadow and prey. I don't want to cast serum visions because they're going to fuck my scries up. So I think we're just going to play two big boys. Then Stubb's still turned on, so like that's pretty nice. I think I'm going to get Steam Vents, just in case this deck plays like Field of Ruin. They can't cut me off a of color. I have no idea what's going on over here. I do like how, when in doubt, I can just put 10 power in play, you know? It's almost, well, almost, right? Yeah, 
we let that go because we want to we want to hit the time warp. So they didn't draw a path. They didn't draw a path. Ooh. Okay, so. sequencing this poorly so now I'm gonna attack and then play another fish just kind of hope my opponent doesn't do something really weird and scary I'm trying to fetch a basic we have plenty of mana I don't want I don't really know what's going on from my opponent so I don't want to take too too much damage I can bolt a creature if I need to. Okay. My opponent casts Explore. They still have this Oath of Nyssa, which I don't... I guess they haven't been able to cast it because they've had to tap this. Jace. Okay, so Jace bounces one of these. We bolt them, then Battle Rage. They can't, like... Jace into double path because of how they tapped. They just they got a Jace bounce, right? I think we got him. Okay. All right, they just scoop it up. I'm gonna have to restart Moto after this game it's lagging a little bit on me old moto why do you do this all right so these strokes have to be sweet i did not think i would like want to sideboard in my disdainful strokes and my stubborn denials against that oath of nissa deck try this I I mean like your guess is as good as mine here 20 viewers I appreciate everybody for showing up and hanging out tonight we're almost through four matches we've been live for an hour this is like a speed land speed record I'm gonna keep it we get to see a bunch of cards early. If they do play a Mana Dork, which their deck easily could have Mana Dorks. I guess Man Utopia Sprawl is their Mana Dorks. So maybe that doesn't make any sense. Battle Rage is nice.
I think we want both of these. Just gonna churn through that deck, baby. Simic Growth Chamber on your Utopia Sprawl land. What a combo. This like little, is this Jace? No, this is Bant. Are they playing like a Rocks War Monk? No, Nissa. Okay. So it's just like Bant Super Friends. It's gotta be like a Jeff Hoogland deck. If I've ever seen one here. Put two cards on top. Let's see what the top one is. Eternal Witness, okay. All right, so Fetch Shock, 15. The Marari's Conjecture. All right, I am going to assume one, two. They kept another card on top so they know what's underneath here. I'm just going to take this Wrath of God. And I think I'm just going to try to kill them. Before they get set up. So like, I'm going to be able to dismember the Witness. So there's Flooded Grove. So we know all their cards. They still can't cast the Wrath of God. They cannot play the Conjecture. They can't really do anything because they have four mana. They can like go Growth Chamber, Bounce, Flooded Grove. Replay Flooded Grove. And then they can Eternal Witness back. Wrath of God, I guess. Play it. Oh, they drew a path. Are you kidding me? Now that turns on the Witness. One, two. Hang on. Shadow, Shadow, Shock. Dismember, Battle Rage. They have Marari's Conjecture and Eternal Witness. So they've got three, four. Three, two, three. Two, four, five, six. So they find a white land they can kill me. They can, they can wrath me. That produces white. So I guess. It's on the bottom. Put this on top. As long as I get to point this dismember at something, one shadow, one battle rage is going to win me the game. Well, I guess they get. To, no, no, don't do this. No, 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 no. Shoot. Because they're going to play Mirari's Conjection. And it's an instant first. It's not a sorcery. I was thinking it was a sorcery for some reason. Now this game's going to get super difficult. But if I would have just played two shadows and hoped, it would have been okay. But now they're going to go two, four, five, get this back, path my shadow, and now I'm fucked. Uh, which they found a land. So, like, they still wouldn't have been able to get me because... We're not going to search. So now we're looking for a stub for this Marari's Conjection. Snap Thought Seize works. So let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. We have to not tap like an asshole. 
Yeah, Ben, there's a Marari's conjecture going on in here. I am just, I am super flustered. I won game one. He's kind of beating me up, though. We can only do 12. We can only do 13 damage. So I got to find a way to find a, I got to find a little more damage. Somehow. They put two cards on top of their Nissa last turn, too. So they're probably going to put some big, ugly creature into play. No, they're going to scry, too. That's good for the home team. <clears throat> She's going to time warp me. This is wild. Oh, they return their witness. Play eternal witness. Get back path. Play land. Man. This Nis is gonna ultimate. And it's gonna kill me. This is wild. Let's attack this Nissa. Yeah, dude, I am getting I'm getting memed on over here. Put two cards on the bottom. Rest in peace with my Snapcaster Mage in my hand. Okay. So they just put two cards on the bottom. So, like, you're saying there's a chance. I'm just flashing this in. Going this there, hitting them. Come on, put two cards on the bottom. We love we're playing against the Eternal Witness Rest in Peace deck. The Eternal Witness Marari's Conjecture Rest in Peace deck. They just put two cards on top. So I'm a little nervous that they have like a Wrath, so I don't think I'm going to play my Snapcaster. I do think I'm going to attack them with both of my creatures, though. Attack the Nissas, because like if they go to kill one of these, then... I, I still, this is still as an ultimate. Two, four, two, one, two, three, four, five. Two, three, four, five, six. So they can play, they have eight mana. So they can play Nissa and just like ultimate it and kill me. If that's their last card. If that's whatever they kept on top. All right, that makes sense. So that's definitely what they kept on top. Oh man, we can almost cast that. How sweet is that? I'm just going to slam this Gurmag Angler next turn through this rest in peace and just laughed at my opponent. All right. So they knew that was there. It doesn't really do a lot. Like, it's just kind of a bona fide explorer. They're still just, like, top decking. Like, take extra turn effects are not that great unless you're doing something with it. All right. I mean, two attacks. We're just dead to a top, like a top deck Nissa we're dead to. We know they have Jace in their deck. So 
Let's attack first. We're doing that regardless. Who knows? We may hit a lightning bolt. If they crack their fetch land, we're going to bolt their face. This will bait out a counter spell. Oh, they just don't have a counter spell. I don't think we want either of these. That's Gurmag Angler next turn, so even if they do wipe the board, we're in good shape. God, crack your fetch land. Bolt you. Bolt you. Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, I appreciate everybody showing up and hanging out tonight. I'm just going to restart Moto. Might as well put this up here. My name is Dylan Hovey, and I'm a part of the Card Horror Network. I appreciate everybody for showing up here. Just um, just went over 1,000 followers, which is great. After about a year and three quarters in to streaming, or a year and a quarter, year and a third into streaming. So, you know, I appreciate it. I've been getting a lot of love from the community lately, which is awesome. Uh, I plan to play a lot of Modern over the next two weeks as my wife is up in Vermont, so it's just me home alone. So if I don't play Magic, then I'm gonna like, I don't know, burn the house down or something. Being left on my own. Like I'm, I'm not, not responsible enough for this, so I need to play Magic in order to make sure I stay safe. Um, if you guys like what you see, hit the follow button, check me out on Twitter. My YouTube page is linked below. All my stream archives are on there. And I learned to play Magic at a store named Gamer Craze in upstate New York. So if you're from there, you should check them out. I link their crystal commerce below as they buy and sell at good prices. So we're loading back up here. Yeah, dude, I'm all alone. Philly went up with my wife, too. It's literally just me. We're going to be playing probably Death Shadow and then other fun modern decks. Uh, probably Death Shadow and Humans. Because I might play Humans in the Team Grand Prix. Or the Unified one. I just want to make sure that, like, I'm not missing out on a busted deck. And I don't know if the Bugler... Yeah, it's just me, dude. It's literally just me. I don't know if I want to miss out on the Bugler. Like, the Bugler might just be insane. And... To play Blue-White. Today is National IPA Day. So I probably could have had enough of those in order to play Blue-White. They are Archmage. Hopefully we cash this league. I played loose in the first round. It would be nice. And it would be nice to make it out. All right, same as these. Put a mulligan as well. So we just want a second land, really. That's just a redraw, and it gives us effectively three looks. I don't know if that's worth a mana or not. Eh, that's probably fine. All right, playing another Hollow Fountain deck. Oh, this is a spicy Hollow Fountain deck. All right, I think we're going to want both of these against this deck. I guess there's no point cracking it now, especially if they don't trigger this, so Vapor Snag. I should have seen the next card. That was so stupid. I was literally just talking about that, and my muscle memory just clicked instead of seeing what they were drawing next. So I can actually play a Death Shadow. How else could you prove that the world that you do truly sucks other than 3 ing with it? I don't have enough, t I just sold a bunch of my tickets. I don't have that kind of money. So I can just play Shadow, which I kind of like. I think I'm gonna bolt this thing as soon as my opponent cracks this fetch land.
All right, they didn't crack the fetch land. Psionic Blast. So they can snag it if they want. They can snag my shadow. I just want to let it go. Okay. Please is open to getting like my shadow dealt with, but if they spend mana on their turn to deal with my shadow, then I can like snap bolt this and then you know be all right. You know, they just attack. It sounds a little bit out of my range, sir. Okay. That might have been kind of loose to cycle there, but... So, like... I am just winning this race. Stub this. I actually think I just let this go, then fetch, snap, bolt this thing right now. Before my opponent gets mana. If they want to vapor snag it, then we're saving, like, if they vapor snag this, then it's, you know, buying us time. This is before they have, like, remand up or anything like that. They have like a spell pierce that's not good. No, they snagged their own guy, okay. Ooh, maybe we'll win the race. Do I want this land? Do I want to save the life totals? I don't think I'm going to need any more than four mana. Famous last words. I don't think we cast our thought sees. That's probably just hanging out. So this Delver flips. Might be in some trouble. Don't do it. I drew land. Snap block in this Delver. Okay. Drawing like a beast. We walk in in a snap plow, but or snap path. But if they do that, then we'll just battle rage over, and we'll stub the path and battle rage over. All right. Um, we're just gonna take this, take this trade. I am cool with that trade, ladies and gentlemen. We'll stub this path. Probably should have played my land. Like, there's no reason not to, I guess. Like, if I have Faithless Looting, then I might be able to, like, play it, flash it back. How's it going, Jay Huey? Mm. 
Ooh, big draw. Big draw, boys and girls. Now we push this. Come on, does it work? What if they vapor snag it? That would be funny. If they snagged their own Snapcaster here. And they would like snag from my Snapcaster next turn. And then we just like snap push theirs. Because even if I go team or battle rage on this, they have to go snap, 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 snag, snap, snag, and then we get to go snap, push, and we're still ahead. Psionic Blast deals four damage to any target and two damage to you. You got it, dude. Blast goes upstairs. Chad, I just got punked out by a Psionic Blast. Cyanic Blast. I stream other decks, but like it's modern season, so I'm playing a lot of Shadow. Yeah, TBR might have won it. If they didn't have the mana to, to get rid of it, which I'm not sure they did. I kind of just want to be like super low to the ground. Like, maybe I don't want these dismembers. They don't have anything big. K Command's got to be decent in the Snapcaster Mirror. And maybe I don't even need Battle Rage. Like, what if we just go, like, full... Full grindy. Let's try this. I don't know if this is right. I've never played against Blue Eyed Delver. No, he shuffled it away, Mini Fridge. He revealed it to his Delver, and he shuffled it. The first one, at least. I think it's a blue-white Delver deck. Well, I appreciate that. All right. This hand's kind of slow. He revealed it off of his first... He revealed it off of his second Delver and then shuffled it away. So he's got an island coming. All right, I'm gonna stub anything I get the chance to stub here. Huh. I'm gonna stub something again if he gives me another, plays another cantrip here. Remorseful Cleric. Okay, I'm just going to dismember this. Gets me closer to playing a Shadow. It gets rid of these two cards from my graveyard, which obviously isn't ideal, but... Mana Leak. Okay. All right, so there's our land. No, I didn't get the thought season, yeah. He showed it to me off the first flip. All right, so now we're going to play the mana game. We're going to try and act on their turn. It's like a flashed in spell caller. That would make sense for them to have. So we know they have a mana leak. And they played their island. Okay. It's a good way to start the fight. So probably I'll leak this. 
Remand. Okay. Remand's good, but this theme vent's being awkward. Del Verino. My opponent is getting the mana advantage here, which is not good. Hopefully we take the mana leak, then play EE on one. And even if they do mana leak this, then we'll still play EE on one. Yeah. Alright, so they flipped it to a remand. So mana leak. And maybe remand. I clicked out of the mana leak on X. I mana leak remand. If we can somehow slip a creature underneath this, it would be great. I'm assuming that's what they kept on top. That's not bad. They might vapor snag their own creature. Oh man, I am no limited specialist. This thing costs one, right? They fixed that rule? Okay. So now we can lead on a Thoughtseize and then bolt the Delver and like be off a little bit, not be under as much pressure. If we draw land here, we can even stub this. So let's go like this. They remand this. They have remanded Mana League. Ruh -roh. Row. So So this Delver flips, I'm now in a lot of trouble. So let's take this remand. Then upkeep bolt this thing. They counter it. Can't become a special if you never try. Let's see what they draw. If they show anything here. Path to Exile. That just kills me. I think. Because they mana leak it. They crack me for... Crack me for three. Next turn, play Cyanic Blast. I've got to draw, like, Discard Spell into... Yeah, my opponent's got me. Whew. Lost to a blue-white Delver deck. Wow. <clears throat> well, I missed a couple land drops in Mulligan in the beginning, right? And the first one came down to like came down to like razor's edges. 